Um, so we'd want to know, Professor, if you'd tell us uh, who Professor Devi Kiprotich Koech is. I had a common bath, which in, in terms of routine terminology, I was, not, I, was born, I was not born into a, a royal family. So mine was a common bath. And, um, and I had a common upbringing. The uh, kids who were, who were born in a, in a village, they grew up bare feet be, without any clothes. Almost naked. I, was, I grew up when I was naked. So there was, there was nothing like clothing. Because clothing was, was a fashion. We came during those, just before independence. And even, even today, if you go to some of the remote villages or, or in this country, you'll still find young, young children. They are bare feet without any clothes growing up. And um, I grew up like every, every other child going to school, suffering going to school without food and so on. Professor, if you'd tell us, uh, uh, how was it like growing in the village in Kericho? Clothes found me naked when I was a few years old. Before I went to school, they started class one. And she was, found, found, she was found me when I was going to secondary school. And she found me when I was going to the university. And she found me when I was already working. <laughs> Most of the, you, find, you find them as you go along in life. You find, it's all a fashion. Growing up is a fashion. Even putting on boring clothes to go and, and take a photograph. But my first photo was, was you was taken when I had no clothes at all. I bought a shirt, I bought a trouser, I bought a pair of shoes, and I put a tie, and a jacket for my a neighbor. So, recently people who saw that photo, which I took in 1963, 1964, may believe that it was, they think that I, I came from, a, I'm not a hustler, but rather I, 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 I'm a dynasty. That's because when they saw the way, the way I was dressed and the camera, it indicated that I was, not, I was not a child who was born into, the, into plenty. I was born into poverty. Where to get a meal is a struggle. And you can go for days without a food. Go, go from home to home, trying to sleep and trying to get some place to stay. Even when I was going to our primary school at that time, from class five and above, there was hardly any place where I could go and even have a, accommodate myself and even finding somewhere to sleep was all used. It was a struggle. Getting, getting a place to sleep and, and getting to school to begin with and being attentive in class. At times, hunger is striking when you are supposed to listen to class. Hunger was one of my companions in my life. Most, at that time, I just wanted to, to, to finish school, grow up and be a teacher. Like the way all, all the people in the village were going to be. Some went to do other, other professions. My elder brother decided to go to work in a clinic as a dresser, to be dressing wounds and dispensing medi medicine to, to the patients. And I wanted to be like him. I also wanted to be like my mother, because my mother was a, was a dentist. I, I was very good in mathematics, by the way. I was very good in mathematics. I had some friends who were working in the bank, so, and I wanted to be a banker, because they used to be almost in uniform, black trouser, a white shirt. So they were well, nice guys. So this is what, this, this is the, some of the things which I wanted to do when I was growing up. You, are co you, had, a, you had a cocktail of passions. Uh, you've said uh, you wanted to be a teacher, your brother, uh, your mother was a dentist, a consulting uh, dentist, uh, your brother was uh, the, uh, into nursing. Uh, basically, you wanted uh, everything. Do you know, for, for, for the record, I, in 1978, when I was doing my PhD, I went to Boston Marathon. 
because I was being I was I was I was being pushed by my friends in the laboratory where we were working together. So I attended both a marathon in 1978, and I finished. I managed to finish. I was number 42. That was 1978. It was. It, some friends of mine whom we were working with were thinking that I should be the right person to go because I was in the state of Pennsylvania. I was the state champion in terms of long distance running by virtue of being a Kenyan and also being in Kenya by, by, by virtue of my coming from Rift Valley. It's only by virtue of, you, of where you come from, by, by, by virtue of your background, that you, you, I was who I, I, I became. And I love sports, especially athletics. That is what chews my mind usually. And um, uh, Professor Koech, then um, how did you end up in the lab? How did you end up under behind microscopes? I was more interested in what I had learned in 1969 when we were working on the, on the disease called endemic goiter in, in Kenya. So I got interested in trying try problem solving, which was part of my... my which was part of my passion. And I joined the University of Nairobi. At that time, I was a tutorial fellow at the University of Nairobi in 1974, when I was drafted into the university in a, in a special program which was designed by the World Health Organization called the WHO Immunology Research and Training Center of the University of Nairobi. So I, I joined the, Then from there, I, I, I got more, more passion and more, more interest in research at that time. We began a long-term career, which has, which has now taken more than 55 years of my life. Every goes back to the beginning of, of my own personal development, because my determination to continue in the area of research is like way back when I was, I had not even joined the University of Nairobi as a student of the university. But that one has, has continued for a long time. And I do believe that research is, is a process for answering questions, problems, everyday problems. I said, for giving attention, for example, in the area of endemic goiter in this country, whereupon I was in, interested in, in trying to see how come is it that endemic goiter, which, which is like lack of iodine in food is one one aspect of, of the site that I was involved in and it is and that was not even my own personal creation into the area of medicine and research it started also soon after I left the University of Nairobi in nine, there about 1974-1975 and I joined a group of persons who were working in problem solving. The dream of Kemet came in because when I was working out of the country at that time, I was involved in, in solving the problem with your, of health with your actual common diseases, especially in, in tropical countries. So we found an opportunity whereby I had a grant from the World Health Organization at that time I think it was around fifteen thousand dollars, which which I, which I got, and I, util, I utilized that research in part of it was was having an idea that it was necessary for us as as a young Kenyans to partic to participate in trying to create some problems to get problem, create solutions to problems that will be, be, be developing this country. So the idea of creation of a research institute came actually in, 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 into focus at that time. I was more concerned about trying to do what my friends, when, wherever I was, when, when I was, when I was out of the country at that time, before I came to Kenya. Because basically I came to this country in, in 1978 when I was already doing my, my doctoral work. And I, just, and I just left Harvard University Medical School in, in Boston, USA. 
to come and continue my research in this country. It gave it gave an uh, it gave an opportunity to, to find out ways when we are we are supposed to get facilities to undertake research in this country. And the kind of this that were are just simple ones, such as malaria, bilharzia, and and the common ones, even tuberculosis and leprosy. Those experiences and the observation which I saw were actually very critical because I realized if if we found ways of getting facility to, to address those issues, it will assist us now to create to find out solutions to those problems. And that, that was my concern, that was, that was my, my vision at that time. And I felt it was necessary. That, that is why the creation of Kenya Medical Science was part of what Parliament was did in 1979. In 1979, the, in March 1979, Parliament passed a bill in Parliament that, that led to the creation of medical research institutions in this country. One of them was in medicine, another was in agriculture, and that one in, 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 in also sleeping sickness. So people were, were interested in most of these, most of these areas and, and also creation, creation of institutions. So the government passed a Science and Technology Act of 1979, which was CAP 250 of the laws of Kenya, which, 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 which became a bill and it became an act on, 20, on Wednesday, 20th of May, 1979. And that, that is how Cameroon was born. It, it received presidential assent on the 20th of May, 1979. And Cameroon was one of, one of them. And, and Cameroon, I was one of the, those persons who engineered and who pressurized the government. And I mentioned this, this before in the previous interviews. So the real reason why research institutes in this kind of work was because of my, to my own personal effort, which, which we did that. Because at one time we went to then Attorney General Charles Njonjo, who then called two of his officers to assist in drafting a bill, which was going to be passed in Parliament. And out of that, these officers also made suggestion to the Attorney General that it is necessary to include also all other aspects of health. Then I was I was brought in to assist now uh, to provide information because I, I'm not a lawyer to pro to provide information to the technocrats of the of the Attorney General's chambers to give them some advice, give them some information, some data upon which they used. That's how uh, how Agri was was established. F fishery was established. Streaming signal was established, and so. So my colleagues, in fact, it is it is it is very well elucidated in in a book which I co-authored with another colleague. There's a story about it, and it's very clear. Community, the way it is started, it is started receiving funding. Fortunately, we have friends who understand us, especially, especially funding agencies, both in very international organizations who have been assisting us. And these in international organizations are all organized formed by governments of the world. In the U.S., we have National Institutes of Health, the NIH. In the U.S., we have we have institutions such as such as the Wellcome Trust, European Union. We have the European Union. In Geneva, we have the World Health Organization, and it's on in the and it's on very organs of, of the WHO. And I happen to be having friends, fortunately. Wherever I seek, wherever I look for, I, I get them. They are, they, they, they are there, they are friends. Until today, they are there, ready to assist. Um, for the since 1978, the inception of uh, Camry, and then the time you served as CEO uh, for a period of 21 years, eight months, do you think uh, 
Cambry receives uh, sufficient funding. When uh, having served under uh, three regimes, basically, uh, the uh, Moi, Kenyatta, Kibaki. When we talk about Cambry, we are talking about Cambry the way I knew. Because I was in Cambry for, for very, officially for 21 years and eight months as a CEO. Okay. I served, for example, under Kenyatta regime. From there, I served under the Moi, Moi administration. I, I, I served under Kibagi administration. It's now we are under Uhuru administration. With Kibagi, I, I served in Kibagi administration for about four years. Under Kibagi, then I, I left the institute at that time. Because I actually, being at the, as, at the helm of the institute for a period of 21 years and eight months as a CEO, I became the longest serving CEO in the history of, the, of, in the history of Kenya. The longest serving CEO of a state corporation in, in the history of the Republic. I rank among the top, the, the top 10 internationally of the people who have published so much in terms of publications. And the, even the nature of that public and the content of the publication is worthy of mention. And we receive, re recently, I receive quite often some accolades from various international organizations who, who keep on monitoring various published publications that come out. And these publications, they normally say, okay, you are ranked number 13. I received all the, including today, I received one. I, I see my public was cited 150 times by 100, 150 times this week alone. They, 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 they communicate that to me. And, and I'm happy. And I'm still doing it. Soon after I, I left, within one year, I established an, an institution called S Center for Clinical and Molecular Sciences. To, to do nothing else, to continue with the research which I, or which I was doing before I, I left Camry. Some of these, some of these research, in, it involves not only me personally, but, ra but rather it is, a, a, it is an extent of what I was doing when I was at the Institute. But I continued doing it. I work under President Kenyatta. Yes. After I work under President Moore. And I, for President Moore, I was under President Moore for, for I, I th approximately 17 years. Under President Kibaki, I worked for four years. I left Kenya 207. 207. 2007. At that time, I was on leave, but I was still the director until a replacement was, was made through Cassette in, in August 2010. That actually formally ended my office work. <laughs> 21 years and eight months. So I have been now for about nine years as the CEO of Center for Clinical and Molecular Sciences, which is my own outfit. Doing, doing the same thing, same problems, same challenges. When I left the institution, I, I retained the linkage I had while, while I was at the institute. But you know, those leakages are extremely essential when you leave. They come, they come to your rescue. <laughs> They've been so nice as in assisting. What would you say were your highlights, your successes uh, at the helm, having been uh, a CEO at Cambry for 21 years and eight months? I mean, best moment, my best highlight was, was the period when we were developing treatment for HIV, such as HIV and other viral infections. Like you may remember the story of Cameroon at that time. The biggest of highlights are yet to come. The highlights of my, of my own career before I retire is yet to come, probably in the course of this year. But we believe the information we gave was extremely useful for those during that time. But since I was vilified and I was abused, by everyone who was walking around. Until today, people are saying, we gave a fake product. I want to prove everyone wrong. After 31 years, this I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to be vindicated. 
we're going to produce, give hope to humanity. 1989 is when we had the, the minor breakthrough, and after that, then we had a, we had a small accident in terms of information. The info, when the information was being taken, the truth got lost in between. It became lies, it became fake. We were not able to explain ourselves. Some other, it was hijacked. The information was hijacked by people who did not know what was doing. What was, they never relied on us to give them the correct information. So that, because I believe in science, not 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 not, not fiction. The the major breakthrough in the is in the year 2021. After 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 19, 1990, after 31 years, the major the next the next breakthrough the next liberation in terms of scientific liberation is going to come in the year 2021. It it, it took us four years for the for the first breakthrough. It's not going to, a further 31 years for the ma the real major and the final breakthrough break, breakthrough. Currently, we have about 70 international scientists working with me. I want to prove them right wrong this time at least for once before I retire. As a senior, I did it as a young man, at the, at the age of 40. Now at the age of 70, as a senior citizen, I'm giving you the correct information. At this age, we can't afford to go wrong. Before I die, we must make sure that we, did, we, we die with the truth. I'm a career public servant, public servant. And whatever I do, I do it for the interest of the public. The complaints of the public are my, are, their problems are my problems. I started my research career on, on April 18th, 1974. It was on a Thursday when I reported. Do you have any regrets? Uh, uh, the time you served as the CEO of Camry, your lowest moments? It's my regret as a CEO, you have to lie. There's no truth in what you do at times. You must do you must know how to balance the equations between the policies of the day and the and the priorities of the day. In my career as a CEO, I have made my own errors in order to fit into the system of the day. And I pay for it. And I'm happy, and I'm happy even to pay the price. Not to be the, the very nice guy. I have met my own challenges, and I've, and I've stayed with them, and I've come around with them. So, some of the things, I, I stay in my own career, all my permanent stay in. There's some people who, who, who are dying with, the, with government secrets. As we, most of the public servants, they die with government secrets. Let me die with none. You don't want to go with uh, any. Yes. But you're not dying. Who tells you you're dying? Njonje is still around, 101 and still going. My spirit is one. I must know what I, what I, I purpose my life to do in this world. And whatever I'm doing, there's an end to it, and I'm going to show everyone that this the best I can. Even in the even in the face of it, like for example, even in my lowest moment, when I woke up from the ICU, I knew the name of the pro and I told my son, I know that name of that project. I woke up with the name of the new project which I'm going to launch. When they could pronounce some, when they could punish me, I knew with the date what I'm going to do. I got immediate. Those revolutions, they, they come at, at the moment when, when you feel you are being abandoned. Then, then there's a moment of lightning, a, enlightenment. For the entire 20th hours in Cameroon, approximately, we apply for grants. With they give us the money to employ ourselves, to pay ourselves. When you are applying for a grant, you must state your salary. 
they pay you back then then uh, in the process the, when they use the money you factor in your salary in the process for the period the grant is, is in force so they pay you the money because you when you tell them what you if it, it is if it's in their best interest of the organization that fund you then they give the money to pay yourself. So the level of that information you, you can get from my book. What do you say about uh, a court case that uh, uh, saw you being given a, a, a jail term of uh, six years or with an option of uh, paying uh, 19.6 million? As a public servant, you, you are not the best liked person. You are, you are not a Dalai Gomebra. In the process of your work, you make decisions based on your own judgment. And I've said before, you are not a, a perfect employee. I've not been a perfect CEO. Neither be, uh, have I been a perfect father, a perfect child. Even when I was young, I, I used to make my own mistakes. I used to fall down, etc. In, in my position right now, I am not a, a perfect person. You make the which are, which are not pleasing to everyone else. You, when you are making a decision, they don't vote. This is a decision I want to make. say yes or it, 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 it is not, it's under a referendum whether yes or no. You make those decisions based on your own personal judgment and the way you see it. And you make those decisions. You may, in the process, break the certain rules of the game. You know you are likely to, to be breaking the rules. There are rules and regulations also. So let, let me make these decisions anyway. You make those decisions and then you make mistakes. They penalize you for doing it. Because you are trying to do what is right. To me, whatever decisions I've made in my life are the best which I would make even right now. But those are this way I believe in myself is the best for myself, it's the best for science and it's the best for the future of, of health in this in, in, in it's the best for humanity. You may decide that the mistake we make all involves funding. It's all financial. I make me you make mistakes, you voice a certain, certain particular field for a particular function, you just say that, that, that was the wrong thing, it is, not it is not required. So I have made my own error, I have made my own judgment, which, which, which is errors in judgment. These are not public errors, because I do not call everyone to, to assist me in making those errors. They are personal, it's a personal responsibility which you, you, you take is what you did on your own and you pay for it as, a, as an individual. When you are making this, you are, you are making this, as, you are making this as an individual, you are not making as a group of people. You don't need to make a decision which are wrong, which you know are wrong. When you are meeting, you make a, as, at the end of the day, somebody has, somebody has to make a decision. So some of the some of the problems I face are, this, are based on the decisions I have made, which according to other people are the wrong decisions. And I buy it then then and, and now and in the future. In summary, the way I, I need I, I need to say I'm so happy for what I've done all my life. I'm so happy. And if if this is the price I have to pay for being successful, if this is the price I have to pay for being a very good scientist. If this is the price I have to for being a very good CEO, then let it be. Let it be the price I have to pay. Whatever the consequences. <laughs>